Hey nature lovers, your friend in Bali here. Just updating all my devices. It's a full-time job making sure all of this is up to date. I won't be long. Interestingly, Bali, all your devices are connected and depend on each other like an ecosystem. I'm synced up with you there, Cape Nature. That's just like the ecosystems we'll find outside. Could you update us some more? Loading. An ecosystem is an area where living and non-living things depend on each other in many different ways. We call this interdependence, meaning that they all depend on each other in one way or another to survive. Right on, Cape Nature. In fact, there are many different types of natural ecosystems, such as rivers, mountains, oceans, wetlands, forests, and deserts. These natural ecosystems support different types of living things and are found in many different parts of South Africa and the world. Isn't that right, Cape Nature? Most certainly you are, my buddy. Feeding relationships connect all the plants and animals in an ecosystem. There are different levels in a food web. These are called trophic levels. Plants form the foundation of these feeding relationships and are called primary producers. This is because plants produce food for themselves and other living things through the process of photosynthesis, which takes place through the leaves. A plant uses energy from the sun and carbon dioxide from the air and water to make a type of sugar called glucose. Some of this glucose is changed into starch, which is then stored in the roots and fruit. Ever heard the saying, starchy vegetables, my body? <laughs> oh, have I? My mom loves mash. So do I. Well, during photosynthesis, plants give off oxygen into the atmosphere. There's a very special chemical that plants use to photosynthesize. It's called chlorophyll. Primary consumers are found at the next trophic level and include animals that eat only plants. They're called herbivores. Can you think of some examples? Think, what animals only eat plants? What about a cow? or a hippo, or even a zebra. Too right, Mabali. Interestingly, the secondary consumers eat the primary consumers, and are called this because they eat animals that have eaten plants. Ooh, like how a leopard eats an antelope, right? Right. Yes. Can you guess what the next level is? Animals that eat primary and secondary consumers are called tertiary consumers, and are always carnivores. Ooh, uh, like a vulture. Then, we also get decomposers, which are very small organisms that live in the soil and break down all the plants and animals. They help break this material down to become part of the soil again. These could be bacteria, fungi, and earthworms. They're very important as they close the circle that allows soil to give plants the nourishment they need. Whoa, okay, Nature. That was a lot of detail. Should we rewind it quick and do a recap? Initiating recap. So, a food chain outlines who eats who. A food web is all of the food chains in an ecosystem. Each organism in an ecosystem occupies a specific level in the food chain or web. If we remove one part of the web, it will affect something else, which in turn affects another part of the web. Nailed it, Cape Nature. And it's because of this dependence that we need to look after everything in the ecosystem. It affects us too. Web of life, my body. Web of life, Cape Nature. What we do to it, we do to ourselves. Till next time, hashtag love nature and let's keep conserving nature lovers.